be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. It's Pentecost. We get the reading from Acts 2 today. Right? It's the birthday of the church. Right? It's the birthday of the church. Why is it the birthday of the church? What happened today? The Holy Spirit came. Just as, just as Jesus said it would, right? Jesus told Nicodemus in John chapter 3, Unless a person is born of water and the Spirit, they cannot see the kingdom of heaven. And right here we see... Right, it says, and they were all gathered there, all of them were together, the apostles. How many were there? Alright, I'm getting different answers. What? Because some people can't hear. Maybe somebody accidentally turned it up in the back. There's, I heard 11. I heard 12. 22. All three of those answers are wrong. All of the apostles, everyone who was there is gathered together, and we're estimating, most scholars say they estimate it was probably at least 120 that were gathered by that point in time. It was all of those who were with Jesus at the Last Supper, all of those who were gathered together when Matthias was picked to replace Judas. Right? There's a, this is a big group of apostles. And Jesus told them to stay in the city and to wait there until the Holy Spirit came upon them. And the Holy Spirit came upon them, and what happened? They started to speak. Depends on which part of the reading you look at. They started to speak in other languages, or other people started to hear them in the languages that they understood. So which one was it? Did the apostles just automatically start not speaking Aramaic, but started speaking um, what those people from those places that Len pronounced spoke? Or were they speaking Aramaic and the people that came from those other places already heard them in their own language? Which one was it? Does it matter? The answer is it doesn't matter which one it is. Because see, most of us are like those, uh, some of those people there. Peter was talking, right? And they said, all these people are talking. And how is it that we're here because they had tongues of fire? This is why I shake my head so I can do things like this. Right? And there were some people there that said, oh, they're just drunk, right? Come on. My magic trick didn't work. It's supposed to be a candle that relights itself. <laughs> so it's supposed to look like this. Right? I blow it out, it does this. Right? So, they've been in my desk for a long time, though. So. But people said, what are they, drunk? And, and that's them trying to blow the light, blow the light out. <laughs> and it doesn't work. They, what happened? Why did they say they were drunk? Because they didn't understand it. And what do we do when we don't understand things that are different than the way we've always done them? We start to fight against it. And we start to move against it. We start to say that this isn't the way that we've always done it. We start to say that things aren't supposed to happen this way. And you know what? The Spirit comes in and says, you can't put God in a box. You can't keep God contained where you think He's going to be because God is going to move you beyond your comfortability and God is going to send you into places that you don't necessarily want to go. And he's going to send you to do things that you don't want to do. And He's going to send you to hear things and to do things that you've never thought were in the scope of imagination of what God was going to tell us to do. Because you see, Pentecost is a time of unifying. 
It's a time of taking what was taken apart and made to be different and, and gives it the way to be brought back together. You see, some people would say that Pentecost is the undoing of what God did in chapter 11 of the book of Genesis. Confirmation students should know what that is, because we just talked about that a few weeks ago. Chapter 11 of the book of Genesis is the Tower of Babel. Where at that point all of humanity spoke one single language and they thought that they were so smart and so great that they were going to unify themselves and build a tower so that they could climb up and to be with God. And God made them speak different languages. And some would say that this Pentecost moving of the Spirit is a complete undoing of what was done at, at the Tower of Babel. But I disagree with that. You see, it's not an undoing, because then that means that we all have to be exactly the same, and we all have to do things the exact same way, and there's no diversity, and there's no difference in any of us. That means all of us will be clone copies of the other. Would that be fun? Pentecost gives those who aren't diverse a way to still communicate and to interact with each other and to be the beauty of the creation that God made. See, Pentecost gives us an understanding and a way to communicate with everyone else, even those who are different than us, even those that believe differently than us, to help us understand and to transmit the love of God out into the world. You see, this isn't an undoing of Babel, making all humanity one again, it's, but it's a giving of humanity away and its diversity to be together as what God intended us to be. Pentecost is known as the birth of the church because that's when the Spirit came and dwelt in and rested upon the apostles and gave them the ability to do things that we find hard to believe. But if we can just understand who God is moving in our world, He's going to do things in and through us that we can't possibly believe either. Because you see, it doesn't matter if the apostles spoke in different languages or if everybody just heard what they were saying in their own language. The fact of the matter is the Spirit was there and the Spirit enabled those things to happen. And if we can just open ourselves up and get rid of the lines of our box that we try to keep God in and let him move in and through our lives, he's going to do those same things to each and every one of us. And he's going to use us to be a beacon of his hope in the world and show people his love through our lives. That's what Pentecost is about. Not making us all the same, but seeing the true diversity and the loveliness of all of God's creation and living into that. And another way that we can see that this morning is one of the greatest psalm verses ever written. I love this psalm. Specifically verse 26. Right? The ships go to and fro, and there's Leviathan, who God made for the sport of it, is what our translation says, right? It's actually, and there's Leviathan, who he made to delight in it. And Leviathan is the big sea creature. He's the creature of chaos. Leviathan is the one that brings chaos into the world. And God created chaos, the monster of chaos. And God created it, and he delights in it. He likes to play with it. I said earlier to, to Paul that there was talk of bath toys in the readings today. And right there it is. Leviathan is God's bath toy. And the point to that is if God can create Leviathan and God can take delight in the creature of chaos, God created you and God will also take delight in you because he's filled you with his spirit and he sent you in his love to go into the world not to create chaos but to show his love so that the chaos that is there can be undone through what God has done for you. So allow God to give you the Holy Spirit and allow Him to move you beyond the realms of the lines that we've drawn to keep us in and to keep things nice and neat and to know that no matter what happens in this world and no matter where God sends us to, that it's always going to, He is always going to be with us. And sometimes even when the Spirit isn't gentle and it's guiding, the Spirit's always going to be with us as well. It's going to help us to share his love with all of the world.